Hi folks, this is Vince and Ida Lee with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to try out Para Orbis. Uh, this game is for two to six players, ages 13 and up, and the average play time is two hours. For those of you that know me, you know that two-hour games are not my cup of tea. Uh, the developer reached out to me, I looked at it, and I said, you know what, I have to be honest with you, I can't do games that are that long because I'm busy, A, B, medical issues, so he's like, no problem, just do what you can. So I want to at least cover the game and show you what it's like. Truth be told, I spent the last two hours trying to figure out this game. There is a lot going on here, to the fact where I have the, the camera off the tripod. Uh, this is the box over here. I even wrote down a list of questions that I couldn't <laughs> find answers to because the, the manual is a little misleading in some instances, and I had to try and wing it as best I could. Let me show you the components first off. Uh, this is the rule book, but before you even get to the rule book, there's about 10 pages in here. Before you even get to the rule book, there is a setup sheet. Uh, it's two-sided. This is how to set up the game here, and this side is sort of like an overview. This is also set up. This is this is a chart that you would use to place the ores onto these various asteroids, and I'll get to that in a minute. And then this is the summary and turn summary here on this sheet here. So these two go hand in hand, and I'll be referring to that a lot in this video because we've never played it. This is our first time. Again, we just started trying to learn this. So this is not going to be, this is how you play the game kind of video, no. This is a, this is what the game looks like. This is how we think it's played. Maybe this is something that you might like to play. Okay, so just keep that in the back of your mind before the comments start flying. Um, this is your headquarters sheets. There's uh, six of them here. One complaint that I have is that a lot of these colors seem to run together. Like I have this, it looks like aqua, Mm -hmm. And hers is green, and it's difficult to tell the difference between the two. I don't know why the developer decided to go with the play uh, the colors that were decided on. Uh, in the box, these are the cubes that supposedly go with that. There's there's pink, there's purple, there's yellow, um, and then there's blue, there's green. So I don't know why no red. You know, why not choose other colors that might be a bit, that might stand out a bit more? So, I don't know, it just, it was some weird color choices there, I didn't, I completely understand. Now, these cubes are two-fold. These can be used to represent a player's crate, they, you'll be mining ore from these asteroids, and you can sell them, or you can complete contracts on these transport ships over here, or you can put them into your storage and then sell them for money and victory points later. So you can use that, you, you can use these for ore, or you can use them for research. Uh, if you have a scientist, or if you take those scientist or research action, you can generate research, sell that research, or you can sell it for money, uh, or you can upgrade your engine track, which allows you to trans to go further out on the board. The game is basically played over 12 rounds. This is round one, round two, round three, and this is the turn marker. And what's weird is, uh, before I get into the rest of that, this bag in the box, I think there's a mistake here. There's two round markers in here. The directions, if I can find them again, uh, give me one second. The directions say that there are I'm looking at the components now. Uh, 36 base markers in six colors. 36 base markers in six colors. This, from my understanding, is a base marker. Whenever you build a base onto an asteroid, it goes like that. Square, square, right? But there's 12 of them. So I'm thinking that everything... I, I, I think I have double the components in my bag. So it was sort of throwing me off. Again, that, that's what... The manual is a bit misleading because I couldn't figure out what was supposed to go where. Um, but anyway, getting back to this, you're, these are the asteroids, like here's A, and here's A, here's Eta, and then there's B, and there's Bertha, and then there's C, and then there's Capex, or Capex, whatever. So these, this inner ring is what players can transport to initially, that's what this 
first square is. As we upgrade our engines via the research down here, we'll be able to travel further out into these other asteroids on the middle and outer ring. To get to the outer ring, you have to, tr you have to upgrade one more time to get out here. And there's a cost associated with that. Um, and and that, that's, that's what that's for. Um, as far as like what you're doing, though, like I said, you're going to be setting up bases on these various asteroids that are all over the board, and, and they'll be changing orbits from like close to high orbit, whatever, uh, low orbit to mid orbit to high orbit. They'll be trans, you know, they'll be moving across orbits, and you're trying to transport or from these asteroids either onto the merchant ship or to your base, like I was saying earlier. And to do that, you need to take actions. And this is sort of like this is a worker placement part of the game where you're going to be using crew members to uh, perform these actions. There's a lot of different actions in this game. Uh, let me see if I can pull up my reference sheet. Okay, so here's employee actions listed right here. You can build a mining base, which allows you to build a base onto that. So sort of like in Power Grid, uh, you know, the first one that's there is 10, then the next one is 15, the next one is 20. Develop a headquarters slot that allows you to expand your worker pool by, uh, by one or two. And if you pay that amount, 12 credits or 17 credits, you can expand your base and hold more people. Uh, you can hire more employees in this game and that will allow you to take more actions. Uh, and, and by the way, employees even have their own values and what they're good at. There's different icons here, and that's what's on this icon reference card. There's a building skill, upgrade skill, contract skill, selling skill, captain skill, scientist skill, mining skill, and their wage. Their wage is in the bottom right-hand corner. This tells you what they are capable of mining at a, an asteroid, black, gray, or white ore. So there's uh, like black, gray, and white ore here. It tells you how many they can mine should they take the mining action. Um, so there's these numbers give you various bonuses depending on the action that you take. So you sort of want to assign these crew members or these workers to the right action based on their skill in that particular action. It, I'm sure Idly and I are going to make a ton of mistakes in this, but we'll get there. Um, upgrade fleet capacity, upgrade drive technology, uh, sign contract. Uh, basically, you need to assign someone to a, or you need to assign a con first. You need to accept a contract before you can begin transporting ore onto that ship. So to assign, to set a contract or to accept a contract, there's three of them here. There's the 7, 5, and 5, or the 2, 1, and 1, however you want to look at it. This is how many, the, the leftmost number is how many crates you have to put on that ship to complete the contract successfully. So there's a 2, 1, and 1. So on the first one is a 2. I'd have to put two blue cubes on this ship to complete that contract. Um, if I don't, I lose victory points, I believe. So, uh, and the second number is, that's how many credits you get, I believe, when you accept the contract, sort of like a cash advance kind of thing. Um, the top left number, the 12, tells you how many, whenever, whenever it's actually complete, that's how many credits you get per cube, plus uh, you get a victory point for each crate that you have or each cube that you have on the ship. So that is the main way to earn money and victory points. However, uh, instead of trading with a ship, you can, uh, any cubes that are in your storage, you can sell those for a blanket one victory point. And I, I don't remember how much money it is. It's like 10 or 8 money or something like that. I'd have to look it up later. Uh, transport cargo allows you to move employees and ore up to your fleet capacity. Based on my understanding, our fleet capacity is three. And on top of this hard cap, each player has a captain ability. Like this person has a little rocket ship of two, which is captain of two. So this player, this, this person can only transport two things at a time on his, when he takes the action. So even though my hard cap is three, this one has uh, two. So I can, only, I can transport up to two things, uh, cargo and people. And then um, on a future, if I decide to transport or be a captain with one of these other ones, I can only do one more from my understanding, based on, based on what I interpreted in the rule book. Because my, my hard cap is three. I, even though this person has an extra one that I could have used, I can't use it because my hard cap is three. So again, I, I could be wrong about that. 
uh, research. Uh, generates the research data that you need to upgrade your fleet. Again, that is for that down there. Uh, sell research allows you to sell existing research data for credits in mine ore. And then bureaucracy is the final stage. Uh, well, you can hire employees before that. You'll get employees. There's Everyone gets starter employees, which are these uh, over here. There's a question mark and a little minus sign on these. Oh, and by the way, there's more in the box. Uh, these cards are the three player plus ships and uh, crew members. So I'm only playing with two player components right now. So these are these aren't, I don't believe, used. That's another thing that's misleading. It's in the rulebook that's misleading. According to setup, it says here, uh, sort the remaining employee cards into two piles and the trading ship cards into three piles according to the level of the card. See backup card for level. Shuffle each pile separately and place them next to the game board. Okay, fine. So what happens to the question mark and the minus? Like, there's this level 1 and level 2. I'm assuming that's what the instruction manual is referring to. But what happens to these? Do they just go away? Are they out of the game? I don't know. They didn't address that. So, we're going to try this. Uh, and this is only going to be for a few turns. This game, like I said, is two hours long. Uh, probably longer if... Uh, you know, you're not familiar with the game's concepts. Forgive me while I try and get this set up. Okay, so, and again, this, this board is huge, so I may not get Ida Lee's board in view. Okay, so another thing I want to mention before we get started, uh, one of the complaints I had. Um, the rule book says, when setting up the game, it says players with employee number one basic and two agents start on wage four. All other players start on a wage of five. I don't understand what... Oh, I'm sorry, you guys can't see that. I don't know what they're referring to. Players with employee numbered one basic and two agent. The only thing I can think of, there are numbers on the top left-hand corner of these cards. Like, here is the number one. Okay? So, here is the number one, here is the number one, here's the number five. At the beginning of the game, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to take three basic starting cards with the minus on the back which are these. So there's three of these in here, and they all have the same uh, skill level. Then we get one with a question mark on the back. These can be assigned randomly, or players are allowed to choose. So I have one question mark. These are like the special agents or whatever. So I don't understand what this one and two agent, they're, I don't know what they're referring to. The only thing I can, my way of figuring this out was the wage on the bottom right says one, 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 two. So to me, I start with a wage of five. Hers is one, two, three, four, uh, one, 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 which is four. So she starts on a wage of four. I start on a wage of five. That's what I decided to do with that, assuming that's right. Um, and another weird thing about the, this is the player order track here. I start on the one, she starts on the two. The player that is winning goes on the rightmost square. However, Everything is played in reverse order. It says uh, reference card, HR phase, not turn one, in reverse order. Choose a new employee. Employee actions phase, in reverse order. So it seems like this is backwards. I think that the winner of the game should be in last place on the leftmost space. And this would be truly reflective of who goes first, who goes second, who goes third, and so on and so on and so on. That's how I would have done it. But it's sort of backwards. Anyway. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Ida Lee is first. Now, the first turn of the game, we skip it. We skip phase one, the HR phase. We would choose a new employee um, from the stack over here. We're not going to do that. Uh, employee actions phase. In reverse order, carry out employee actions. So you've got four employees over there. Feel free to do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> um, I, know, I will be referring to the rule book often. Um, for this, because there's a, there's a lot of things going on here. I would recommend setting up a base. Uh, first of all, we're on turn one. Yeah. We have access to A, B, and C. I would look at this track and say, okay, what planet is going to be in shortest range to me throughout most of the game? That way you can be sure that you'll have access to it. Because we, can, we cannot transport people two asteroids when we're not in range of it. Because mm -hmm. this, like, if I, tra if I settle on C, if I build a base on C, C's not, nowhere to be found on round two. 
So I might set up a base there, but I won't be able to mine or anything on it as far as I think. Uh, if I, I would need an employee on that to mine it. And on round two, I would not be able to transport people off of it or mine off of it because I can't access it. So some asteroids may not be around, you know, on certain turns of the game based on your engine level. Mm -hmm. Okay, so whatever you want to do. I, I would recommend building a base somewhere, wherever you want. Okay, so she's going to build a base on Ada. So I think that what you have to do is you have to choose one of your four people to take the build action, which I think is... Uh, is that what these are here? I don't know what that is. I'm thinking that's what that is. Engineer. Sure. Well, you would, you would keep the card there oh, okay. and put the one the there. Yeah, put the marker there. There we go. So now that's the build action. So you would pay 10 credits to build that. Okay. So, yeah, I'll just throw that over here. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. So, okay. Now, that was one action of your four actions because now you've got three people left. Okay. So now, now if you had an, if you had a build skill, like there's, again, there's numbers on these. My guy has a five where that action is, which means that I would take, I can, I can build that at 10 minus five, or whatever the next cost is minus five, is what that, that skill level lets you do it. it. It deducts, it discounts the price. All right, so now you get to choose something else, I, I think, now is it? Uh, do, 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 we, do we take turns doing that? Cause, I yeah, I thought it was your turn. I have no idea, though. Uh, yeah, this is what, yeah. Clearly, we haven't rehearsed anything. <laughs> just, just this is, uh, yeah, this is proof that we haven't rehearsed anything. All right, um, player order. Players act in reverse order. The losing player is the furthest on the left. Right, okay, so, but yeah, that's just weird. Okay, um, so... It doesn't really say. It doesn't say if we you take an action, we take an and I take an action, you take an action, I take an action, or if it's you get to do all four actions and then I get to take all four actions. I don't know. What does bureaucracy mean? Bureaucracy is a separate stage of the game. That's like oh. that's after we perform our that's after we perform our actions. We would take that step. Okay, so what does reset player order mean? That's also under, is that under bureaucracy? Yeah. Yeah, so we would, don't worry about that. Reset, oh, okay. That means like we, whoever has the most victory points, I think, is the one we would we would switch switch around our cubes, uh, and that would decide who goes first next time. Okay. But I'm trying to figure out right now is yeah. do we uh, do we take turns or do we just take four then I take four. Action. You know, just go ahead and take four, I'll take four. I mean, to me, I would think taking turns would be more fair. Yeah, that's what I thought. But, no, no, just go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah, go ahead. It doesn't specify, though, right? It doesn't specify, but... Well, it's if a, it's more fair, you go then. Well, to me, though, like, if you're, in, if you're losing, though, it makes sense to be able to catch... I don't know. But, like, what if I all of a sudden start building all these buildings in one go? You wouldn't want to put all those... See, that's the thing. You wouldn't want to put another one over here because wouldn't, you wouldn't get anything from it. So I don't think there's, there's no way to block me, as far as I can tell. There's no, the only way to block me is to continuously build mines, mm -hmm. but I don't, with the amount of money that you have, you may not have, you also have to pay wages at the end of your turn. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so how do I mine? So you would need to get a captain and transfer, and this is another reason why I think it's four actions and then my four, because you would need to transport you would need to choose one of them to be your captain. Okay. And then that person can fly two things of your choice. Oh, well, depending on how many's on your card. You have a, who are you gonna who are you gonna set as your captain? I don't know. Are they all have, they have a skill of two. Oh wait, which one's the captain? The skill? rocket ship one. Well, yeah, then this one, I guess. Okay. What's what's your specialist have? My specialist has selling skill of four. Oh, okay. So you could sell stuff. To instead of using the ship over here, you can use the sell action to get more uh, credits for your. So how would I mine to get stuff in this? Okay, place? so what you would do is you need, you need to uh, get a captain and assign him as captain. I guess put him there. 
beast captain. And then you can assign, you can fly up to two people, or one person if you want, over to Ada. So mm -hmm. you could put the three over here. Or wh whoever, you're oh. whoever you want to mine. Who do you want to mine? Is there a mining skill? Oh, uh, everyone on the very, it's on the very bottom. It looks like everyone has a one, okay. one black, one gray, no white. Oh, okay. I see, you're fine. Okay. So, okay. so now you've got one more. Now, he just got there, mm -hmm. so you can take his action. You can only move people that haven't performed an action yet. Mm -hmm. So he hasn't taken an action, so you can mine with that person. So you would choose a resource to mine. You would say black, gray, or white. I flew him over there, right? You did. But that, you, you, you flew him there with your two, Captain. Oh, I see, I see. So you, you, you used one guy to transport another guy that hasn't moved yet. <laughs> I know. That's hilarious. Yeah. Okay. So you can choose black or gray. Okay. Um, and then that cube would go down one spot on does, the map. Does it matter? I don't know yet. I don't know if it matters. Uh, all right, whatever. Let's choose a gray. Gray, okay. So that goes from three to two. I, well, I think it was on three. Uh, these cubes can easily get knocked around. Yes, they can. Um, the starting says three and one. No. Did these get moved? So this should have been... I think they all got moved. Did they really? <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, three, three black and one gray, then two and... Well, I had that wrong, didn't I? Two black, four gray. There we go. And then that one was 4-4, four, four. that one was 5-3, mm -hmm. yeah, 3-2, three, 3-2-1. Two. Three, two, okay, so I think these are right. I think these oh, just okay. got messed up and moved around. Okay, so there's one gray on this one, three black on this one. So if you choose gray, then there's no more gray that can be mined at that location. Which I don't understand why we need different colors. Honestly, like, there doesn't seem to be like, okay, this ore is more valuable than a different ore. Like, I don't understand that. Um, unless it's, I mean, granted, these people, maybe we get, maybe we'll have miners in the future that can only mine a certain color. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But no ore seems to be valuable, more valuable than another. And which is another weird thing that should have been. I think, if, if, I wish that it would have been like, white is the rare one, so I would get more, more boxes of ore for my trouble to mine that more valuable ore. To me, that would be cool. But anyway, so you're, you're gonna mine gray? Yes. Okay, so this is on the one spot. It goes, I guess it's gone now, so yep. it's on zero. So you can, gray can't be mined anymore, but now you've mined... Can I move it to my storage? Um, not yet. Oh. So you've, what was your mining skill on the, the gray, one? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's on the very bottom. Bottom left, right? Bottom middle. It'll say, it'll, there's a black, gray, and white icon. Yeah, it was just one. One, okay, so you get one cube. If it were two, you get two cubes. So you've got one cube. Now, in order to transport that somewhere, you would need to assign a cap, another captain. Another one. Okay. And then, now you've already transported one thing this turn. Yep. So you could transport two more. But you've already used this guy to work. So you could use this guy as a captain. You can't transport it here because you haven't accepted a okay. contract yet. But you could transport it back to your storage and then on a future turn sell it with your sell action. Okay. And these markers will go back? Yes, at the end of your turn. Right. And any, any ones you don't use, you don't have to pay ba wages for. Uh, okay. Your wages are over here on the right. You have four, a wage of four. If you don't use number four right now and, and skip it, you'd only pay three this turn instead of four. How do you sell from your storage? There is a sell action, I believe. Um, oh. It's the sell ore from storage, bonus for agent. Allows you to sell ore directly from your HQ storage. You receive credits and victory points for selling ore. So that's one of the two ways. You're selling on a ship, completing contracts on a ship, or selling from your storage is the way to get money and victory points. Okay. So I guess I'll we'll use this guy to transport stuff. Okay. Transport that to here. Okay, so you're going to transport that to there. Okay. Where do I put this marker? I could just leave it uh, on the captain thing. <laughs> Fine. Whatever. So, do they explain what these are? That, those are, you have to spend, you have to use your upgrade. Um, that's the, that is the, this here is the... Is that the price? That's the price of it, 12 and 17. Oh. That's the price you have to pay to open that slot on your, on your, on your worker. I see. And then once you have that, you can get more workers on your, your pool. Okay. 
And the upgrade scale means that it'll decrease? Decrease the cost, right. Okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Like I said, there's a there's a lot here, and this is our first time. Well, no, it's the building skill. It's not the upgrades. Is it? Is it yeah. the building? Because it says cost reduction when building mining bases or expanding the. Okay. Well, you're right. Yeah. So I guess the up no the upgrade is this and this. Yeah. I think the fleet capacity and the engines. Okay. So yeah, the building would would pertain to this. Right. Yeah. Even the even the symbols match. The first symbol matches the the symbol on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all right. So now I get to go. Um, I will use this guy to build, oh, I want to build something. I can build on A, B, or C. I'll go ahead and build on B, on B here, on Bertha. However, I have a 5 on the build action here. So 10 minus 5 is 5. So I only pay 5 to the bank. Uh, oh yeah, that stays here. And then I put that there. Okay, so now I've got, this is just extra. Uh, so I pay five to the bank. Okay, and now I've got three more actions up. These are just neutral workers that really don't have any special skill. Um, so I want to transport people over there so they can start mining. I'm too. sorry, quick question. Yep. Was I supposed to pay the wage? Not yet, that's at oh. the end of the turn. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah, pay wages at the end of your turn. I, guess, I mean, I guess you could have, you could do it real quick right now. It's fine. I mean, so it's it's one, two, three, four. So if you give me a five, I'll fish a one out of the bag. It's four. Yeah, because right you're. Hmm? It's four. Oh, you have four. Yeah. Oh, okay. That two, works. three, four. All right. Because your your wage is four because you've got. Yeah, I used them all. All right, sorry. Go ahead. You're fine. So I, I'm going to do the same thing you did, I think. Um, B is in range of me. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to make one a captain. And I'm going to fly number two over to, well, yeah, number two over to Bertha onto my base. He'll mine, or she, whoever, will mine. And I get, a, I have a skill of one in black. So that goes down by one, and I get a blue cube. And I could do the same thing as you, or I can... I think I'll, I'll try a contract. This last person is going to uh, try and negotiate. I have no special skill in accepting a contract. What's the trade do? Transport cargo? Let's trade. Let's shake hands. Selling skill. Oh, that's for selling. Okay, I'm not going to do that. So I'm, I have a zero skill on the contract here. So I get to choose one of these three things. And if I accept the top one, I have two blue cubes on here to fulfill this contract. And these little arrows, that's the minimum required for this ship to launch. At the end of the round, there's 12 rounds. At the end of the round, whenever these are filled up, that ship will leave. So that, that's what determines, if these are filled up, this, this ship will leave, and that's when contracts are either fulfilled or not. And I'll, okay, so I get seven credits. I could, I could, all right, let's do one, because I don't know if I'm going to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to put this on the one space. I get an advance of five credits. And if I had a skill, a contract skill, I would put another cube on that saying, okay, I get bonuses for having that high contract skill. I think I get an extra credit. I'm not sure what the bonuses are for that. I think the bonus is, I know you get more money. Um, I think you get more money and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm, 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 I will get to it when we get to it, how about that? But that's not the case here. I, I need to get a bonus, I just don't remember what the bonus is. I think it's just bonus credits per or sold, is what I think it is. So that, I think ends my turn because I accepted a contract. I have to pay five, one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to give that five back to the bank. All right. And that concludes one turn. Um, it's bureaucracy. Transport ships leave if full. Receive credits and victory points. New ships and employees. 
All right, so let's let's take a look at that real quick. Um, new ships and employees. Uh, now the ships are also numbered one, two, and three. Um, so bureaucracy. Draw cards from the top of the lowest level trading deck to replace any which have left. In a two-player game, there should be one trading ship available. So we're not going to draw any new cards right now because this card is still here. So there's going to always be one card up for for both of us to go on. Uh, employee pull. Draw new employee cards and place them face up beside the board. It depends on how many people are, a number of players and number of cards already available. In a five or six, always draw three. Two, three, or four, always draw two. Then draw additional cards if necessary until there are at least two more cards available than the number of players. Okay, so two more than the number. So there be, should be four? Yes, okay, so there should be four cards now. We need this box. All right, so there should be, I'm just going to draw from the one deck. So these are the employees now that are available for hire for our next turn. All right, and reset player order. I don't think anyone got any victory points this turn. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess it stays as is. Um, okay, so that was round one. And now round two, we move the player market around to. Now A, B, and D are available. E, G, F, and H are available, but at longer distances. We don't, we don't have those. So now, in reverse order, you get to hire one of these. To hire someone, you pay the cost on the bottom left hand corner, the, the, you, you pay the cost in wages, five times their wage. This is a wage of three, so you would pay 15 to hire this person. Cheese and crackers. But any that are left over at the end of the round get discounts. This becomes, let's say that these two are gone and these two are left. At the end of the round, a times four is put on here. So it's no longer five times the wage, it's now times four the wage. Mm -hmm. And then, on the next round, if they're still not gone, they're now times three the wage. And I know you guys can't see that, let me show you that. Again, I've got this all over the place. All right, so what, what I was saying was that these guys, let's say that these four were available, okay, and we bought, or we hired those two. Um, normally they would be five times their wage. So we've got a three here, so that'd be 15. So Let's say that these guys haven't been hired. At the end of the round, a times four would go on it. So now they're, they're wage times four, so they'd be 12 instead of 15. If they're still not hired, three times three, that's a times three, is nine. After that, if they're still not hired at the next round, they're just removed. So they get discounted, but then they go away, assuming they're not picked up at that point. So these are the ones that are available. Um, these are research. Uh, oriented. They've got little gold symbols here. They're specialists in that field. And they can do some other things. So, I know you can't see them. Do you want to, here, I'll let you look at them. Actually, I'm going to put this one back and try and get someone a little different. There, there we go. So we've got a wider range of abilities now. Um, so, how do you research? Like Research is just, you take the research action. You pick someone to research and you generate cubes on your lab based on the number on your beaker, next to your beaker. Your, your, like this guy has a research of one. So if I were to research with this character, I'd get one cube on my, on my lab. One cube or one ore? Just a cube? Cube. It, yeah, this, this counts as data and ore. These okay. cubes double as ore or... Uh, research data. Okay, so how do you spend that research data? That's also a future, that's a different turn. Oh. Lord. That's a different, that is, um, research cubes can be, well, I think it is anyway. Let's see. I think it's one to generate. Yeah, research is one. Cell research is a second one. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, yeah, so we can sell research. So if you want to sell it, that's one. Or if you want to use it to upgrade these, that's the build action, I think. I think upgrade capacity? Yes. So it would be... So, okay, yeah, you would use... So you would use a scientist to generate research cubes, or anyone to generate research cubes. And then you would use an engineer to upgrade one of these two tracks. And the number of their skill tells you, like the engineer skill will tell you how many cubes you, it's, it's five, it says it's five, I think, right now. Sorry, it cost is five research data to upgrade your fleet. 
and to upgrade your drive technology the cost is five so if it costs five to upgrade one of these two tracks mm -hmm. so you would take that five minus your engineer skill for the upgrade and that's how many data you would pay to upgrade those okay. does that make any sense i see i think so i hope so <laughs> <laughs> well i'm yeah. glad someone understands because i didn't okay so you get to choose okay so you you're, you bought one yeah so that would go in your number five slot or you can replace someone else but i wouldn't recommend it yet if you've got oh, a free slot right. So what is it, four times or five times? It's five times for the first turn that they're so available. 15. So 15, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now you would put your one, two, three, four, and five on the people. One, two, three, four, five. You got it. And now you have five actions. Okay. Oh boy. Okay, so do I have to build again to mine again? No. no. You've got a mine base there. You can You can go back and... Well, what happened to that person? Was he there? Oh, put who? What, what number was oh, that? Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. He stays there until you transport him back home. Okay. So he can stay there in mine until you transport oh, so him. Also, transporting back. back home takes an action. Yes, <laughs> along with ore. Okay, okay, okay. He, you couldn't trans. You you transported the ore home. Okay. But, but you, because he because he had already moved that turn. Oh. You can only move people that have taken an action that oh, turn. Oh, that's right. Or moved it. Okay, I see. Okay, I remember. I think. Again, we may. I may have gotten something wrong too. So. So if I let him stay there. He can mine again. He can mine again. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So. I want him to. Mine again. Okay. So you would get a green cube. Which you're gonna mine the black one because there's no other. Yeah, the black one. All right. So he's down to two, and you get a a green cube. All and right. I want to transport it with, um, with one. Can I do that? Yeah, you can. You can use your captain and transport now. Oh, the captain is, is static, right? Like he. You can be any anyone you want. For um, every turn. No, not static. You can anyone can be captain, that you want. But what I would recommend, if you can transport too, is there something else that you want to transport before you do that? Is there like? Oh, so you can transport more than one mine. One orange. Yeah, let's say let's say that you decide to develop on another asteroid and you need to get someone there to mine it. Mm -hmm. You could use one of your two capacity to transport someone there and then you could bring the three home or the ore home. So you could bring you bring someone to that asteroid and bring this one home and it's still two cuz it's one person to one or from. Okay, so the, my max my maximum capacity is two for that character. See that? See on the very bottom, the little rocket ship. Yeah. It says two. Yeah. So that is that's how many you can transport with that particular character. Okay. But in your entire turn, your max capacity is limited by three, like three. Or, okay. or this. I see. Okay. So so can I transport this woman to my transport first, and then use an action? Yes. Yeah, so you mine. just pick one to be a captain. Oh. So just put a captain in there. Okay. Right now, pick someone else to go. Well, first oh. of all, what are you trying to transport? You trying to make another base? Well, no, I'm trying to mine this other black one. Oh, I see what you're saying. You want to transport someone else to that location. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then, okay, so then, yeah, go ahead and transport one of your other numbers. Take the one. Well, the one is your captain. So you would transport a two, four, five over to this location. Okay, so take the two over here. I think so. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if you can have the same person on the same spot oh, or not. Oh, okay. I could, I'm not sure. If not, that's fine, I can take it back. You know what, I'll, we'll allow it, uh, just for the sake of, I, I don't know, that's one rule that I'm not sure about. Oh, don't they, they don't say it? I, it? It's probably in here, I just don't want to, we're already up to 40 minutes. So Pause. I, yeah, we're, we're already up to 40 minutes, so I'm like, for the sake of time, let's just keep moving, and then, this will be the last turn. Okay. So, whatever you want to do, it's fine. Um... I'm confused. Okay, okay. I know, so I'm confused too. Don't feel bad. I got bad. one there. So, this person... That, tr that one it. becomes the captain. That then trans... You can now transport two things. Two things? Well, yeah, up to two like things. Like two people? You I can, can transport, transport two. two people? Correct. Well, I, well, yeah, I wouldn't want to, though. So, can I do that? I think so. Yeah, assuming that you can I occupy the same spot with another... I don't think you can. I don't think you can either. Okay, so but let's not do that. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure it's in the rule book. I just haven't. 
I definitely After want two to... hours, my brain is mush at this point. <laughs> okay, okay. So how about this? Okay, okay. So I'll just use her to transport. Oh wait, no. I'll use this guy to buy a base. Okay. I want to buy. I'm gonna build a base, a mining base. I'm okay. Gonna... So you can build it on A, B, or D. A, B, or D. Okay. So. Well, you've already got one on A, so it doesn't. And you have it on. Now, you can build one on B, but you have to pay more. Yeah, and plus you're already depleting it, so I don't want to. Okay. Um, can I do this? Yeah. So and then you would pay... Now, you've got an engineering skill of what? Seven. Seven. So, so 10 minus ten, uh, 7 is 3. Yeah, so you'd pay 3. Okay, here's so you a 20. A 20. Okay, <laughs> so here's 5. So that was... Here's 17. Okay. Okay. There you go. And... I want to... Now you saw that transport from your cap. Oh, I have to build. That works. Right, okay. I still have the transport, right? Mm-hmm. So do I need to transport again to bring someone here? You already did. You, 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 you okay. signed one as... You signed that one as a captain. So you still, have two, you still have a transport of two for that person. Or a capacity of two for that particular person. Okay, so he built it, right? He built it, yes. Can I use this guy to mine? Yeah. Or you can. Well, you have to transport him there first. Then you can mine. Mm-hmm. But so, I, I can't, I can't put like more than one person though on one thing, right? Oh no, no, no! I'm sorry. The five, the five, the five it. built it. Oh, so, so he just goes, goes there. there. Yeah. Okay, so he'll mine. Well, is that who you want to mine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he transports there, but with the one. Is there anyone that you want to transport home or transport home? Like, do you want to transport this ore back for your second transport? I. Oh, I wanted to see if I can transport two pieces of ore back. Okay, gotcha. And I don't think I can at this turn. <laughs> no, you transported one person and well, you transported one person to an asteroid, but yeah. you still have one more. You can you could transport one thing home if you wanted. How do I mine with this guy? <laughs> uh you can you can go ahead and just take take the mine action. Which he did. And but he, he already... Okay, so he's there. He didn't He didn't take the action, though. He was simply transported there. He didn't take... I know, I know. You used one guy to move him there. Okay. But he, he still hasn't taken his turn yet. Okay. So, like, okay, like this guy, right? Right. When I had to use somebody else to carry him over. <laughs> yes, basically, yes. You car He carried him over. Oh, yes. my gosh. Okay, so I guess I'll mine the, gr the, the gray one again. Okay, so you're going to mine the gray one. Sure. All right, so here's your green cube that I put there. Okay. So oh. now... So can I trans... So can I use this guy to transport these two mines over here? See, now you've... Uh, how many things have you transported so far? Nothing. One. You've transported one person. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, you, your capacity is three. So, yes, you can make that guy a captain. You can transport these two ores back home. Are you sure? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, if you want to be captain and, and transport those guys, and that would be your max capacity of three. Because one for this person and then two for these two. And cubes. it starts over after your turn, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So, I can so now you've got three cubes. Yep. So, I can put it there. Right. Did I use an action with this guy? Yes, you, who's the captain? Remember? He was the captain? Remember you get you met, made him the captain? Okay. To transport the oars home. I thought I made her, that's why I put it. That there. one was to transport this guy here. Oh yeah, okay, okay. So yeah. can I just do that? Yes, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so exactly. That's yes, understandable. Okay. Alright, so now my one four, Oh, and I gotta pay? Yes, yeah, so you pay your wages. Oh crap. So that's just uh three, three four, five, six, seven. seven. Oh, I should probably update you to seven. Seven. There you go. Okay. I have 12 bucks. Yay! 12 bucks! <laughs> okay. Now mine... Oh, I forgot to get my employee. Or my... my I should have I should have hired a person before taking my turn. Oh, you could. Can't you? Yeah, I could still do it. I just don't know... Don't you have to put a new card? No, no. This was... It, there was the, that was the first phase of the game. The first phase of a turn is hire employees. You got yours. I should have done mine. But I, uh. I, I forgot to. So I'll just do mine real quick, okay. and then um, I'll do... Now oh, that would have been nice to have before. Mm -hmm. This has a contract of two and a trade of six. But see, I don't, I'm, not, I'm not looking to sell any from my base. I'm looking to complete a contract. That too would have been nice to use here, but I can't do that right now. So I'm just not going to hire anybody, I guess, for right now. Okay. Um, because this is three, this is three, this is one. Actually, let's hire this guy. He's, he seems to be good all around. 
he's a very basic guy. He's, he's, his cost is one, so times five is five. So I'm going to put five back into the uh, ten and five. Okay, so I get a five. All right, so I've got one person there I could drill. Um, hmm. Tough. Okay, so I'm going to use two to drill, so I get one. Okay, I'm going to use someone, I'm going to use one as a captain. He's got a capacity of two, so I'm going to transport two over to this ship. Now here's the thing about completing contracts. My contract only calls for one cube. Had I done the two contract, I would have been good here. But because I overproduced or oversold to this merchant or put too many cubes, I don't get extra victory points for that. I still get money for the amount I, for the extra ones I put on there, but I don't get extra victory points for it. I get one victory point for this, the, the one cube that I needed, but I don't get an extra victory point for the second one I put on there. Had I taken this contract instead, this two, I would have um, been able to get a victory point for each and more money, but I didn't know what you were going after. I thought maybe you were going to go after this two. I wasn't sure. So uh, that is that. So I've already moved two things this turn. Um, I've got a three, four, and five. I could, oh, I mined, right? So I, I have to move something down. I'll move the black down. All right, so that, the black has gone on that one. Um, I could build another base. I could, right now, A, B, and D are in range, but none of them, I could build on D, but that would be kind of rude. Because you're there, you know, maybe I won't. This is comp a competitive game. It is competitive, <laughs> yes. Um, let's take a look at my list of actions and see what I'm missing. Mine or sell research. Research. Let's, let's do research, even though I really don't care for research. You know, we'll just we'll try it. So let's say I want to generate research. Well, no, because none of my guys are scientists. So if I try researching, I only generate one cube. I need five. Well, no, that's not true. Well, no, I've got no because I would need five minus one because this guy has a one on his little gear upgrade symbol. So I would need four of these research cubes to move any of these up if I use this guy. If I had bought this guy who has a research of two, I would need three data, five minus two being three, to upgrade one of these here which I don't have. So I guess researching right now wouldn't be good unless I sold that research for that or for money. I could do that, but oh, Evie. Okay. Um tough tough decisions. I could maybe I would I mean, let's I guess I'll sell some data for money. I'll use the 3 to generate one cube, well, research, generate one cube, and then I'll sell it. Which one is that? Um, sell research. So I have to do another scientist action, I think. So this guy here, to sell it for 10, I get 10 credits per, is it 10? Ten credits for each data sold. Okay, so I get ten credits for that. And now I've got this four. He's got a nice building thing, but unfortunately, the, the, everything that's available is kind of crappy. Um, I mean, I could build here, but that's going to deplete rather quickly. I'll just pass with this guy and not pay his wages this turn. So that means one, two, three, four is what I would have to pay. And that's, there's a five. I'll take the one. Okay. And I think that's it. So now at the end of the, that's the bureaucracy phase now, which, let's see. Draw cards from the top of the lowest deck. Okay, so this is still here. New trading ships arrive. 
Oh, this is, okay, wait. Oh, we didn't do the first part of the bureaucracy phase. Uh, trading ships leave. So here, this ship leaves because both cubes are on the minimum, like there's no more minimum spaces that are filled up. Mm -hmm. So these would leave. This, my contract is completed. I get, uh, you gain one victory point for each crate supplies up to the maximum of the contract size. So I get one victory point for that. Because I, even though I had two crates, my contract called for one crate. But I still earn money. Uh, I think. Uh, for each crate already supplied, you receive credits equal to the standard price paid, plus any agent bonus. This is up here on the 12. Okay, so I would get for each crate of ore that you supplied, so I get 24. So I would get 24 money. 12 for each one. So, 12. So this is a good way to make money. Not too bad. And then this one leaves. And then a new one would come out. So here's a 2-1-1-10-7-7. Same thing, but the prices are a little higher. Well, at least the initial price is. The, the, at the, uh, the final payout is only 8 per cube, as opposed to the 12 that was up here. So you get more money initially from this, but you get less money at the end of the contract. Okay. So... If you were to sell yours right now, just, I mean, we're going to end it before it goes any further, because, you know, time. But, well, we can play off camera. <laughs> but if you were to sell those three cubes right now, like, let's say that you were to sell, that would be selling ore from storage. That would be, sell ore from storage, sell ore from storage. You would get... You get credits equal to two plus the employee's contract skill and one victory point. So you would get, what, what's the highest contract, or the, the highest handshake? Four. Okay, so you would get six per cube. Okay. So that's six times three is 18. 18, plus one victory point for each. So if you were to t utilize that action, that's what you would get. Okay. So you would get 18. So it's sort of... And three would be the max I can sell? I thought it would be two because... Because mm -hmm. that's the max I can hold. Even though three is the hard cap, that's the max. No, that's only for transporting. Okay. The capacity is for transporting things. So selling from storage, you can have, like, a bunch? I believe so. Yes, yeah, sell or... Okay. The employee sell or skill determines the maximum number of crates. Oh, okay. So it's the number of crates that you can sell is equal to your contract skill, which is... What? Really? Yes. Oh, that's so. Wait a minute. So wait a minute. So is it selling skill? Bo there's selling skill bonus, and then there's contract skill bonus. Yeah, that's what I see. So it says selling ore allows you to sell ore crates that you already have in your HQ storage. The employee sell ore skill, which is this, determines the maximum number of. Okay. So, the handshake symbol says how many you can sell. The piece of paper symbol tells you how much you get for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, right. yeah, so that, that's, I, I see, this, see what I mean, folks? There's a lot, there's a learning curve. Uh, I should have picked the fleet ship. I, I know. I really mentioned in the beginning of this that this game would have been better as a digital game, and I wholeheartedly agree. There is a lot of little things going on here that are extremely confusing to new players. Like, for anyone's first game, I highly recommend that you sit down with someone that knows how to play this and teaches you how to play it. Unless you are the kind of person that loves to spend hours trying to figure stuff out. Like, there's a lot of little things, a lot of little nuances in this game that are throwing us for loops. And some parts of the rulebook aren't exactly clear to us either. But that is, in a nutshell, um, Parrot Orbis. Not a bad little game. It's just, it takes a while to play. And like I said, I would, I would, I would play a digital version of this any day of the week because the computer could do all the work for me. Um, and anything, any rule stuff that I got wrong, it would explain to me, sort of like Race for the Galaxy. I learned Race for the Galaxy on the digital before I got the card game.
because it was easier to understand on the digital end of it. So yeah, Parrot Orbis, um, if this is something that you want to check out, uh, feel free to do so. Um, just keep in mind that there is a learning curve and it takes up a lot of space on your table. So uh, special thanks to Ida Lee for bearing with me on this. Uh, if you guys haven't already, feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out my official website, www.dancegamingaddiction.com. This is Vince and Ida Lee. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.